One of the reasons why people love using Surecart so much is because of our checkout forms and how easy it is for anyone, regardless of technical ability, to completely customize it. And yet there's a ton there, even for developers that want to add custom fields or different custom components. It's all so easy. And I'm going to show you the basics of these checkout forms right now. All of your checkout forms are going to be found right here where it says forms. So let's click into it. You can see on this site, I already have three checkout forms created, but let's create a new one for this video. I'll click right here where it says add new. And the first thing you're going to want to do is give this checkout form a name. Now this name is for your eyes only. The people that are purchasing through these checkout forms will never see the name. Now you're going to be presented with some starting points and each of these different starting designs are simply using components that we have available for you. And we've configured them in such a way that these templates might help you get to what you want faster. So the default one has what's called this price selector in it. And you can easily add this to any form or take it away from a form, but that's the main difference with this. And the simple form does not have this price selector, but you can add it very easily. Down here, we have a form for different sections, and this essentially is just gonna have more info in it, like an address, but you can easily add an address component that you'll learn. The two columns a little different because it's a two column layout. So we're gonna save a special video for the two column layout. It's very powerful in what you can accomplish. And then right here we have a checkout form using our pay what you want block, our name your own price. So it can have these different price choices here that someone can click on and select. And then this one right here is our invoice checkout template. And this uses a special checkout component where the buyer can enter in the amount that they want to pay. Like I said, we can get to any of these checkout points. It's just a different mix of components that we have available. So I want to start with the simple one and I'll show you how we can get to all of these very easily. And then I'll click on next. And right here, we need to make a few choices. So the first one is what products do you want to sell in this checkout form? Now, there is a centralized store checkout form. We're not customizing that right now, but everything you learn in this video can be taken into that. We're creating a standalone checkout form where we would add the products that we wanted inside of this form. So let's go ahead and click on add a product. And here is this list of products that we have created already on this store. So I have one down here and it's named website care plan. So I'm going to just select this right now and we can add multiple products at this point that are configured inside of this checkout so i can click on add a product and i can scroll down and i can choose a different product like that and then we can give the buyer an option here do they have to buy all of this together can they choose one of these options or can they choose multiple options and it's up to you how you want this configured. And for each of these products, you can choose a set quantity, but there's also a quantity changer that will be available that you can make available for them. And if you've added a product and you're like, ah, I changed my mind, I actually don't want that product. There's three little dots here. You can click on it and then you can click on remove and then it goes away. And then right here is the option for where they're going to end up after they fill out this form and make the purchase. And this is what's called a thank you page. So do you want it to go to the standard default one that's already set up when you activated shirt cart and it's available for all these checkout forms? Or do you want this custom checkout thank you page? So if you want a custom one, you can just toggle the switch on and then you can link this to the page that you want the buyer to end up with after they place this order. I'll toggle this off, but you can always change this later when you're ready. All right, I'll go ahead and click on create and you can see here is the generated checkout form. So let's take a look at what makes up a checkout form from top to bottom. So when I click here at the very top, you can see 
there is this switch and it's green and it says live. And when I click on it, it says test. What this does is it puts this checkout form in live mode or checkout mode. Live mode will actually use your live configured payment processors. And if it's in test, it will use your payment processors in test mode. So you can put it in test and do some tests to make sure everything flows the way you want it. You like the experience, the integrations are all set and working. And live is when you actually want to take real payments. So I will put this in test mode. It's always good to start out in test mode. Now, when you click this top area or any of the different components that make up a checkout form, over here on the right, you're gonna see the options change. And these are gonna be options that are available for what you clicked on. So when I click at the very top, you can see I can change my template. I can change the color. I can change the spacing. And I can set that thank you page. Here's something really cool. There's what we call loading text. This is when someone actually clicks on the buy button and there's the different stages of the order. You can customize what shows there. That's pretty cool but each of these have options. So if I click on the email field right here, you can see I can change the label. See where it says email? I can change that to say, enter your email address. And you see, as I type it in here, the text goes there. And then we have this little red required asterisk. So obviously for an email that is going to be required, if you're adding other kinds of fields, you can choose if you want it to be required or not. And then you can have placeholder text. So let me put something here. You can see it's the placeholder text now in the field. And this is just to let the person filling it out know the format of what you want them to enter. And so you can click in any of these components. Now, there's also a easy way of moving around in these components, and it's called the list view. I like to have the list view open for everything. So to pull up the list view, there's this little icon here that you need to click on and it pulls up the list view like this. If you click in it and you see the form is collapsed, just click on this little arrow and it will expand all the components that make up your form and you can quickly jump between your components. And for the totals right here, this is the order summary. You can see it's collapsed and there's additional options in there. If we wanna see it, let's just click there and you can see it's expanded. And each of these are gonna have options as well. Now, if there was a component that you don't want on your checkout, it's very simple, you can click on it. There's these three dots right here, but you also have the same three dots right here. And when you click on it, there's options. And in this case, you would just wanna remove it just like that. So I've removed the express payment option. Don't worry, we can easily add any components that we want back to this checkout form. So let me click on a field like this. And you can see the blue button is now illuminated with the plus. So when I click here, you can see this plus here doesn't work. But if I click on say the email field, I can now click on the plus this is what's known as the block inserter. And this is where we're gonna see a list of things that we can add to the checkout form. So I'm gonna scroll down and you can see it right here. It says Surecart. And here's a list of components that we can easily add to enhance and customize this checkout form all without touching a line of code. For example, you don't see an address being requested. So we have a component right here that says shipping address. And when I click on it, it gets added to the checkout form. You don't see a checkbox and you might want a checkbox for your terms and conditions. Well, here's a checkbox component. I can click on it and it's easily added to my checkout form. We also don't see name. Well, here is the name component. I can click on it and it's added to the checkout form. We'll rearrange these in the order that we want them in in just a moment. So there's all these components that you can add to your checkout form. So remember I was showing you the difference between some of the checkout form templates? Well, there's the name your own price. That was an option. There was the donation component. That's where someone was able to choose a dollar amount. And there was also the price selector. And when I scroll down here is that price selector. You can add these to the checkout and we'll do that in a moment. So actually let's start with the price selector. I'll add it right there. So there's some of these components are gonna be product related. One of them's the price selector, the other one's the donation, and the other one's the name your own price. So as soon as you add it to your checkout form, it's gonna ask you what 
products do you want someone to actually be able to select? So if I wanted this product, I can select it. If I wanted this product as well, I can select it. I wanted this product right here. Oops, let's just pick something. There we go, I can select it. So now we have this price chooser right here and we can customize each of these options. Now you might be looking at this and saying, wow, this is a mess. Uh, let's go back into the list view and make this look exactly how we want it. I'll click right here to go back into my list view and I can rearrange the different components right here. So for example, I want the name at the top. So I'm going to click and drag that to the top and that checkbox. I'm probably going to want that right above the submit button. So I'm going to click and drag that to the bottom. And then this price selector, you would typically want to put the price selector at the very top. I'm going to click on it and drag it to the very top top and the price selector has child items so I can expand in each of these price choices right there we can have these custom options so remember at the very beginning I was showing you that each of these components have options and all you have to do is click on it and you would have the options appear over here on the right so for this price selector right here I can click into each one of these and I can fully customize the text the description the look is it is it checked by default? I have all of these options to control it right here, but we'll have a dedicated video specifically on using this price selector, as well as using the name your own price, as well as using the donation block component. I just wanted to show you this quickly. So let's go ahead and click on price selector. We're not gonna use it for this form. I'll click the three dots and I'll remove it. Most important thing to remember is that the checkout form is made up of a series of components, each with their own options. So for example, I've got the submit button. Well, I can click on it and it reveals the options. The text on it says purchase and it shows this padlock. But what if I don't want that? Very easy. I can double click where it says purchase and let's change the text. Great. I just changed it to buy now. And then right here, if I wanted to show the total in the button, I could toggle this on. I usually like that view. If I didn't like the secure icon, I can turn that off and now it's gone. You can essentially accomplish whatever you want. Now, if you did want to change the color of this button, it's pulling from the color you set up with your store, but on this form, you can change it. For this, you would have to click at the very top, just like this, and there was that style option. And it says form highlight color. We can set this to whatever we wanted. So if we wanted a reddish color, whatever color you want, you can just go ahead and select it here to match your brand exactly. I'll go ahead and reset this though. Now there's one more component that I want to take a look at and that is the order summary right here where it says show summary. This is it right here where it says totals. I'm gonna go ahead and expand it and you can't see <laughs> any of the options there. And that's because when I click on totals over here on the right, it has options. Is it collapsible and is it collapsed by default? You can see we have it collapsed by default. Let's toggle that off to expand it. Now there's different components that make up the order summary. The main one is this right here where it's gonna show all of the products that are in this checkout. And you can see there are some options in there. There is the option to remove the product and change the quantity, but you might not want that. It's very easy to disable that. There's options when you click on it over here. If I don't want to make a product removable, I can toggle this off and you'll see the X will go away. And that means someone will not be able to remove this from the checkout. I don't want someone to be able to change the quantity. I can toggle this off and you can see that has gone away as well. There's another component inside of this order summary that you might want to change, and that is the coupon field. So when you click on it, you can adjust all the various texts that are available. And if you just don't want to show it, why don't you toggle this on and it's going to disable it and not show it at all. Now, when you're happy with how your form looks, you can simply click on publish here in the top right and then publish again to confirm. And now your checkout form is ready to be placed inside of any page or post on your website. And I click on the logo here to go back. You can see I have this checkout form now listed in my list of forms. It's right here. If you're using the block editor, Elementor or Beaver Builder, there's a dedicated block or module to put this checkout form in your designs. But if you're using a different page builder, you can just copy the short code and place it anywhere on your website and that checkout form will appear. That's just scratching the surface of the power of these checkout forms. 
We have advanced layouts. You can add columns. You saw that you can have a two column checkout. There's a default store checkout. There's so much flexibility and options. There's custom fields that you can add. So make sure you check out the rest of the videos that we have available so that you can get the most out of the checkout forms in how you run your business.